Today on The Wyatt Sharp Show, I have the incredible honor to interview the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, as well as my MPP, David Piccini. Before we get started with today's episode, make sure to click the subscribe button down below, as well as turn on your push bell notifications. All of this and more is coming up today on The Wyatt Sharp Show. Welcome to the podcast. Today, the Premier of Ontario is joining me, along with my local MPP, David Pacini, who is the MPP for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you very much to the both of you for joining me today, Um, and especially to you, Premier. I know you are extremely busy, so I want to thank you very much for taking the time to join me today. And uh, same goes for you, David. And I'll add, Premier, when I got the email saying that you could take the time to come on, it was for sure one of the most exciting days. Um, But Premier, I'll start off with you. Um, Why did you want to get involved in politics and why did you want to run for Premier of Ontario? Well, great, great question, Wyatt. It really goes back to our family back in uh, all the way, well, part of the party for God knows how long, 50 years, but it started in uh, 1990 when the party the NDP uh, got elected and we thought the world was coming to an end and pretty well did in the province after he, he was in NDP, we were there for four years. My dad would be sitting there you know, uh, yelling at the television. And I said, rather than yell at the television, why don't you go and get uh, and do something and give back to the community? And so that, that's exactly what uh, he did. We ran through the nomination. Uh, my dad was fortunate enough to get elected in the Mike Harris government. And then my brother Rob got uh, elected. And then uh, when Rob was running for mayor, he asked me to, to uh, join him down at City Hall. And I did. And then... Uh, And then moving forward, uh, I was going to run for mayor again, and the opportunity came up to, you know, change the province. And what a great team we have. And our our team and the people of Ontario have done an incredible job uh, through this pandemic. Uh, Why I always say I play the smallest part in this. It's the people of Ontario that have just been absolutely incredible. And that's why Ontario is leading the, uh, the way, no matter if it's uh, testing, rapid testing, or PCR testing, or vaccinations. Uh, it's all because of the, the great people, the frontline healthcare workers and, and the CEOs of hospitals, but everyone involved. And, and the great guy is just is saying, David, uh, the Wyatt, uh, you, you just take the bull by the horns. And I use David as an example in caucus all the time. Maybe I should stop doing that. But he just, he does an incredible job. He's a true leader. And uh, he, he's just uh, doing a fantastic job in his riding. All right. So um, I want to talk about vaccines for a moment. So um, there's been a few weeks during the pandemic where no vaccine shipments have been made to Canada. I interviewed Monty McNaughton and he actually said that you are the one calling the CEOs of vaccine companies when realistically that should be a responsibility of the federal government. Should people be concerned, though, that the deadline of September 20? Uh, 21 to get all Canadians vaccinated is unrealistic. And uh, when do you believe uh, all Ontarians will be able to be vaccinated by? Well, we, you know, we heard good news today. AstraZeneca got approved from Health Canada. So that really uh, adds a, an, another uh, bit of ammunition for us to go out there and get people vaccinated. AstraZeneca is going to be used for people under the age of, of 65. We're focusing on 80 plus right now. But uh, the more vaccines, the better it is. It's, I always say it's like going to war without ammunition. You know, we, we need these vaccines and we need to know when we're going to get them and how much we're going to get. But here or there, we're ready. Uh, all the public health units are ready. Hospitals are ready. Vaccination centers are ready. So I say, bring it on. Let's go. Let's, let's get the show on the road. David, would you add anything to that? Yeah, White, well, I'll give you some local examples just to give you an example. I mean, as Premier said from day one, we rely on the expert advice of, of Doc Williams, our Chief Public Health Officer, and we work closely with our local public health units. So when we're told overnight that we don't have the supply locally in Orno, Newcastle, in our public health unit, and we're told that we have to pivot from Pfizer, which requires a refrigeration, uh, special refrigerators to store the vaccine, and we're told overnight you've got to shift to Moderna because we have no more Pfizer, you're going to get Moderna. That throws things completely upside down. And we had to pivot, you know, in one of our health units to Ross Memorial instead of Northumberland Hills, where they purchased that refrigeration unit. Now they'll use it, but it's thanks to the, you know, heroes on the front line. They're pivoting, they're moving quickly. 
um, as Premier said, we'll always support them and listen to them. And, uh, and I thank them for moving so quickly after we were rocked with the difficult news, as Premier said, going to war without ammunition is very difficult. And um, so, you know, big news today and we're very excited. Okay, and so on the topic of AstraZeneca, um, the AstraZeneca vaccine has been approved in Canada and uh, 20 million doses have been secured for Canadians. So Premier, uh, what portion of the 20 million will come to the people of Ontario? Well, we like uh, we, we hope it's gonna be proportional based on population. We're 38% of the population. So hopefully we'll get uh, 38%, let's say 40% uh, to round the numbers off. And that, that'd be great if we could get that. Uh, then we'd be able to get everyone vaccinated. And, you know, again, what David was saying, you, you have to pivot. We're doing 80 plus with uh, the Pfizer and long-term care with some of the Moderna as well. Now we have to do it simultaneously, uh, side by side, uh, parallel. We'll, we'll be doing under the 65 if the AstraZeneca lands on our doorstep uh, relatively soon, along with doing the uh, 80 plus. There's over 600,000 people 80 years of age and older, so it's a good uh, chunk of the population, but uh, we're, we're ready. Okay, Premier, and so um, just as kind of a follow-up question, and this is one of the last questions on vaccines, but once vaccines become available and there is a large amount of them, will your government make it mandatory for the people of Ontario to get a vaccine? No, no, I just, I've, I've never believed in that. It's not up to the government to dictate to people what they're going to put in their bodies and what they aren't going to put in their bodies. Uh, we're hoping people get vaccinated, but by no means should anyone be forced, uh, no matter if it's a flu shot or a vaccination shot. Again, I'm, I'm hoping everyone does, but in saying that, uh, they have their individual rights and freedoms. Okay, and so um, we all know that small businesses have been negatively impacted by COVID-19. So what steps have you taken, Premier, to ensure small businesses can stay open right across the province? Yeah, well, great, great question, uh, Wyatt. What we're doing is uh, helping the small businesses get over the hump. And, and we've been working very collaboratively with the, the federal government, but small businesses, we're taking care of all their overhead costs, be it the taxes, hydro rates, gas bills. Um, and and the, the best part of it was uh, upwards to a $20,000 grant that's been enrolling out and it's been very, very successful. The federal government has jumped in there. They're taking care of 95% of the of the, the rent, 65% of their, their wages, and uh, everyone's helping out. And that's the reason, you know, and people have really been hurt small businesses. But when I was looking at the stat uh, that came out the other day, there's less companies that went bankrupt throughout the pandemic than it, they did the prior year. And I think it has to do with uh, helping the, the folks out. Every, every level of government's pitching in to help the small businesses out. Okay, and so now I'll ask David the question kind of along the same lines, but would you add anything to, the, uh, to that, David? Because we know that um, there's restaurants like the Orno Country Cafe and the Fire Hall Bistro in Orno specifically that have been impacted by COVID and so many across our riding. So uh, what have you done, David, as an MPP to ensure that these businesses can stay open? Well, Wyatt, I think when COVID first hit, I mean, I did a couple of things. We immediately launched sector consultation. So we worked with restaurants and small businesses. I had manufacturers all on the line, our big companies. You know, we're blessed to have GM. We've got Cameco. We've got big players, uh, OPG and others in our in our vicinity. And so uh, and so we did that pretty quickly. I also launched a website, covidsupports.ca for small businesses to log on. And when you log on, you've got individuals and businesses, very simple. So if you're a business, you click on there and you've got all the business supports and people don't care what level of government right now. Premier Ford's been a leader across Canada, bringing provinces together. And it's not about levels of government. We're working closely with the federal government. People don't care, they just want the help. And so that's why we've worked closely with them. Our small business grant, um, more recently, Wyatt, we've been uh, we've been going to every business uh, with a, a piece of literature on the small business grant and just helping them apply. My office has been working uh, very diligently with all small businesses, and I've, as I've said, I've had uh, someone traveling the riding in every community, and just recently in Newcastle and Orno. And then I follow up with each business myself, calling them in the evenings, making sure if there's any issues, we help them. And thankfully. Um, I think Premier will have the, the most recent numbers, but we've had thousands 
of uh, local businesses apply. They've received the funds uh, up to $20,000 within 10 days. So they're telling me, Dave, this is helping us, uh, getting us through. We're looking to, to reopening when it's safe to do so. And, and as we pivot to the response framework, which our region's in, and it's really helping them uh, weather the storm. Okay, and then on the top, you just mentioned the COVID response framework, David. So, um, Premier, should Ontarians be concerned that the emergency break will have to be implemented in their riding or in their region, rather? Oh, why? I really uh, hope not. And, and everyone's really pitching in, following the protocols and guidelines set out by our chief medical officer and the local medical officers. And as long as we do that, uh, we we can avoid uh, the third wave. Uh, we're doing everything we can as a government, but again, I always say, if it's not, uh, if it wasn't for the people, you know, the people make the the decisions at the end of the day. If they're going to go and have big parties and so on and so forth, and and what I've seen, ninety nine point nine percent of the people are all pitching in, they're helping out, they're they're doing everything they can to avoid the the third wave here, and and we're doing the the same. And everyone uh, in all three levels of government is throwing everything we have at. Uh, at this uh, terrible, terrible uh, disease and then the COVID-19. But this is going to help this AstraZeneca. The quicker uh, we get this uh, vaccine, the quicker we're going to get needles in arms and, and it'll make the community a lot safer. Okay, just, uh, oh, thinking, um, Businesses are pivoting and, you know, it, we've, we've been able to pivot to the response framework thanks to the work of everyone in our community. Businesses first and foremost who've been embracing public health guidelines. And you know, I'd like to give a special shout out to Ryan at uh, Newcastle Foodland, for example. Not only did he pivot, um, but, but he made sure that folks with disability challenges um, had the access, special time delivery so that they could get the food during this pandemic. So not only are they ensuring a safe, uh, a safe environment for their workers and for customers, but they're also being, being very cognizant that you know, there are folks in our community with disability seniors, and he was recognized by, uh, by our municipality of Clarington as a result. So special shout out to folks like uh, Newcastle Foodland. Okay, and so my uh, next question uh, to you today, Premier, is actually on behalf of my grade six class at Orno Public School. Uh, what is it like being the Premier of Ontario? What's the best thing and what's the worst thing? Well, the, the, the best thing is serving the people of Ontario. Our family uh, believes in public service and, and really giving back and making positive changes, making sure our province thrives and grows and prospers. And uh, that's exactly what we've done. We, got a, we hit a little bump in the road, all of us, the whole world did with this pandemic, but we're going to come back stronger than ever. We're going to lead North America in job creation, economic development, as we were prior to the, the pandemic. And uh, what is the worst thing? Boy, I don't know. Do you know what it is? I don't get enough sleep. I don't get to, I'm in the office till about midnight. I roll home, we get to sleep about one o'clock. And then uh, we, we, I got to tell you a story, why. So we, we have, my, my wife's a cat lover. So we have these four cats and they drive me crazy, to be honest with you. And they come in to our room and they start meowing at about 4.30 in the morning. So after I get about three or four hours sleep, five o'clock, you know, 5.30, you're up, and you're ready to, ready to go. Do you need any cats, Wyatt? Because I have four that I can ship over to you. You know, I think I'm good, but um, <laughs> but um, yeah. my next question is, uh, what can youth do to get youth rather do to get involved in politics and civic engagement? No, oh, that that's a great question. You know, in in our case, I'll just speak for our party. You can join the PC Youth, and it, it's not about just uh, political. I always look at it is about building relationships. And, you know, since our family's been in politics well over 30 years, the same people that I met 30 some odd years ago were still strong, strong relationships, strong friendships. It's getting together with like minded people, giving back to the community. But I always encourage uh, uh, any any young person get involved. Uh, it's absolutely incredible because there's a lot of networking happening and and a lot of uh, you got to have fun, too, while you're doing it. But make sure before you jump into politics, spend some time in the private sector until you know what's going on in the real world out there and then uh, jump into politics. Rather than going right from school into politics, you, you have to spend a little time in the, in the private sector to see what's uh, going on out there. Okay, and so my last question to you today, Premier, is a bit of a personal question. Your brother, Rob Ford, was a well-known man. He served as mayor of Toronto 
from 2010 to 2014. What is your favorite memory of uh, your brother and you? Oh, I have so many. I think of them every day. And as David, I always quote Rob, you know, he taught me a lot going down there, but really his customer service excellence. There will be never ever uh, a politician in this country that returned more phone calls. And uh, I, I think I return a lot. I think Rob returned uh, double the amount going and, and helping people, especially people that just arrive into Canada. And they just couldn't believe that they could call the mayor on his home phone number um, and then within the largest city in all of Canada and get a call back. And if they needed help, he'd show up to their door and, and help them out. But I have so many fond, fond memories of, of Rob and he blazed a, a trail in so many different areas. He, as I say, you talk about Ford Nation, he was the founder of Ford Nation and created it. And, and uh, we miss him dearly. We really do. I do. That's for sure. Thank you, Premier. So, Premier, it's been great talking to you today. And again, thank you very much. So Thanks, much. Wyatt. I got to extend an invitation. When we get through this, my friend, you come down, pal, and we'll get a picture in the in the Premier's chair because I have a feeling, David, Wyatt yeah. is going to be a future Premier. I can, I can see it. Yeah. If you have a choice be, between doing media and doing politics, stick with the politics. Okay. Yeah. Come on down, and uh, I'll be knocking on for you, Wyatt, someday. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Premier.